What up guys? It's Chris with Paula Cat Barbecue. Now here in Phoenix, temperatures are finally starting to get down below 100. I mean, it's only September, so of course it's starting to cool down. Uh, but that means I'm going to be grilling a lot more. Now of course I've been smoking and grilling all throughout summer because I'm crazy like that. But now that temperatures are starting to get down, you're going to be seeing a lot more coming out of my grill. So today what we got going is we're going to be smoking a beef chuck roast. Now you've seen beef chuck roast smoked out there before, but what we're going to be doing is turning it into beef green chili. Now this stuff can be put on tacos, tostadas, nachos, or just eaten by itself. However you want to do it. So let's get this beef trimmed up and get started. All right. So what we have here is a three and a half pound uh, choice chuck roast. Now, when I'm cooking it, I'm gonna be treating it a lot like brisket because that's how it's gonna cook. I mean, uh, beef chunks this size kind of cook the same. Um, and a, a lot like brisket, we're just gonna trim up a lot of these, this fat area. So it's got the hard fat here. Um, we're gonna try to get some of the stringy stuff out. But what's nice about chuck is you got this marbling here. All this marbling is gonna render and it's gonna get nice and tender. So we're just gonna get get this um, hard fat out here and off the sides. All right. If you have any stragglers like this that kind of separate away from the, the main meat, go ahead and just chop it off. It's just gonna burn off. And especially because there's this fat area right here. So I'm gonna miss some meat, but it's not gonna be that much. So. All right, so I got this thing trimmed up as much as I wanna do it. Um, as you can see, uh, the chuck is composed of a bunch of different muscles and areas that kind of come together. So you can't get all the fat out of there, but, but what we're going to do is just throw it on there. And it's going to cook just like that. All that's going to render out. So the important thing is to get all this, this hard fat area, like, like this stuff. I mean, that stuff is just not going to be good eats. So now with this, I'm trying to be really traditional. So I'm not going to be doing any fancy, um, rubs or anything. I'm just gonna be doing a simple salt, pepper, garlic. Uh, what I, I just mix this up real quick. It's two parts um, kosher salt, two parts coarse pepper, and one part um, uh, granulated garlic. So whatever you're using the measure, just to do, do the measurements. Just set my mix up real quick. So, all right, and we're gonna um, basically rub it just like you would any other thick piece of meat. It's a big piece of meat, so they can they can take it. Um, and if you want to use a binder of some sort, go for it. Um, I just find that it's not needed. Some people use um, so some oil, like olive oil or peanut oil, um, or mustards, uh, Worcestershire sauce, anything like that. It basically just acts as a binder. But as you can see, it's, it's sticking. It's sticking without any problems. Should get all the sides and all the different crevices. This is what's gonna form your bark as we're cooking. So. All right, that should do it. So you wanna let this sit uh, for about an hour, maybe a couple hours. Um, yeah, basically just it's just a dry brine, just get that flavoring in there. So we're gonna put this in the fridge so it stays cold um, because you actually wanna put your meat on the grill as cold as possible because cold meat takes smoke better. Um, so we're gonna put it in the fridge for, for an hour or so. And while it's happening, we're gonna get our, our grill ready. And today we're gonna be using the pit barrel cooker. Hey guys, I just wanted to discuss something real quick. So like I said, I am be using my pit barrel today. The reason why I chose this for the chuck roast is because with, with a big hunk of beef like that, you want that raw charcoal flavor that you can only get with the charcoal or an offset. I mean, I love my Green, Green Mountain, um, but just the flavor I'm going to get from, from the from the charcoal from the pit barrel is going to be amazing on it. So, so doing that, but I want to show you how I set up my basket for the pit barrel. Now I, I follow the directions just like uh, the pit barrel company says to do. Um, but what I do is I actually, when I set up my, my charcoal, I put um, some chunks of wood inside the charcoal. So what's that gonna do is once I, once I light my charcoal and, and dump it in the center here, um, I'm gonna put another uh, chunk on top of that uh, to get that instant burn. But what's gonna happen as, as, it, as it burns out, it's gonna light those other pieces of the wood. I have one over here too. Um, it's gonna light those later. So you'll get a, a longer 
um, burn on, with smoke. All right, so I just wanted to discuss that with you real quick. Um, hopefully you guys um, get some something out of that, but that's just the way I do it. All right. All right, guys. So we got some good smoke rolling. Got everything set. Got probes in there. Um, so the top number is the ambient temperature right now. So yes, it's 100 degrees right now. Um, and bottom temperature is what we're running inside the pit on the grill. Um, it's at 282. And my pit barrel usually runs at around 280. Um, but And the pit barrel cooker is sold as a set it and forget it type cooker. But I always um, just add a, a a probe in there just because I, I want to know what's going on there I'm going on in there I want to know if there's anything wrong um, so so it's always a good idea just to, just always pay attention to your pit so all right so let's get this meat on let's look at the color on this meat see how it's kind of sweated in ah it's gonna be awesome all right in there, center. Got some sizzle. Kind of squish it together. Make sure all the parts stay together. All right. Getting get close. That's what we're looking like. All right. Close it up. All right, guys. So I am gonna let this let this run about an hour or so before I look at it again uh, and start spritzing. I'm gonna be spritzing with um, some beef stock cut with a little bit of water, just to kind of loosen it up a little bit. Um, but honestly, I'm not gonna be um, checking out too much. I'm gonna treat it just like a brisket. It's gonna go as long as it's gonna go. Um, I'm estimating about four hours on the pit barrel. Um, I'll put a probe in there um, in the meat after about an hour. Uh, but honestly, there's no time on this one. You just let, let it go till till it's ready. Uh, we, I am gonna wrap it. I'm gonna wrap it around the 165 mark. Um, but again, I'm looking for color. You don't wrap the temp. You wrap the color. So it's whatever comes first. All right. So I'm gonna say this now, and I know you've all heard it before. There ain't no rules in barbecue. So you know how I said I'll be doing some spritzing with some beef stock. Well, I started filling up my spritzer. Turned out, I'm all about beef stock. Um, so I came up with this mixture. Again, uh, you don't want to use apple cider vinegar or just plain water or, or apple juice or anything like that. You want to keep it savory. Uh, just kind of build those flavors as, as the meat cooks. So the beef stock I had came up to about here. Um, estimated probably maybe about three quarter cup to a, to a cup. Um, so to make up the difference, I did a little bit of Worcestershire. If I had to guess, maybe about a uh, quarter cup, maybe probably less than a quarter cup. Um, but again, again, it came to about here. Then I just cut the rest with water. Um, so yeah, it looks like a lot of water, but there's a lot of flavor in that Worcestershire and, and the beef stock. And the beef stock, uh, that's the reason why I use beef stock. So if you don't know, um, the difference between broth and stock is how it's made, um, obviously. So the, the broth is is when they, when they cook chicken, beef, vegetables, um, that's just the water that they get from the actual meat itself. So just the chicken meat, beef meat, um, and vegetables. Stock is it's a more full-bodied flavor. So that's when you're actually cooking the bones of the chicken and the carcass and the beef, the beef bones. It's the cartilage that melts down in, into the, the 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 thin broth and makes stock. So it's more of a hearty mouthfeel, uh, more flavor. So basically think of it as level one is broth, level two is stock. Level three is what we're gonna be using in our wrap, and that is beef consomme. So basically um, think of broth as an ingredient that you use in cooking. Stock is, an, is, the, is the base of like a soup or a sauce or something like that. So we've got broth and you got stock, which is the base of a soup and consomme is basically the end product. Beef consomme is the final soup that, that you can you can eat as, as a meal. So that's what we're going to be using in our wrap. All right, um, hope they hope you found that helpful. Might be without too much information. 
Um, let me know in the comments down below if you found that useful. Um, if not, oh well, there you have it. Do what you will. So we are now at the one hour mark and I have not touched this thing. I've just let it go. Um, so we are sitting at, you can see that, sorry. We are sitting at about 180 or 289 on the, on the grate. So we are running a little hotter than I usually am, um, probably just because of the temperature outside. You see the ambient temperature is 111, which I have the probe right right next to the, the grill. So it's still hot out here, but. Um, so we, we've been riding about 288 the, the 293 the entire time. So that'll probably just be a quicker cook. So, all right, so it's been an hour. Now it's time to open it up and spritz and put in the probe. looking great a good bark going probably can't see very well but all right get a spritz going now pro of course you want to get in the middle as best as you can So we're re we are reading 118 internal, where I got that probe. So, all right, we're gonna let close it up, let it ride. So 118 hour in. I figured when I put it on, it was cold, so it was probably about 43, 45 degrees to put it on. So we're probably looking, I had probably about two hours or so, maybe an hour and a half before we wrap it. But I'm going to check it about every half hour or so just to make sure it's moist. Um, and basically, I just, I just want that bark to set before we wrap it. Because, again, you don't wrap to temperature. You wrap to look and make sure that bark is set. Basically, if you can scratch your finger um, and, and the bark doesn't come off, that's when you know it's set. So, remember how I said there's no rules in barbecue? Well, yet again in this cook, we we're proving it. Here, let me show you something. So our pit temperature right now is about 275. It dropped down a little bit because I just checked on it. Um, but our meat is about 162. And I said I'd be wrapping around 165. So we are just past the two hour mark and I just checked on this thing. And we are not quite ready. And remember the important thing is to not wrap to temp, wrap to color and crust. So this thing is looking phenomenal. But look right here, when I scratch that right there, how it kind of flakes off. Well, that tells me that the bark has not set yet. So we are not ready. So even though we are at two hours and the temperature is at uh, above 160, we need to get the, get the thing a little longer. Cools look good. Got a good clean smoke going. All right, let's lock it down. See how much longer it needs. You can just barely see that blue clear smoke. I, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's it's that perfectly clear blue smoke that you want. All right, so it's been about three hours, 10 minutes. And great temperature is at 311. It, it picked up a little bit after I checked on it. And the meat is dropped down a little bit to 158. So we've been hovering around the 158 to 160 for the last hour. So we are definitely in that stall. So let's take a, take a look at it. Oh yeah, look at that beautiful color. All right, so this is what I was talking about. You don't wrap the temp, you wrap the color. And that is absolutely beautiful. So it's been about three hours, 10 minutes. We're riding about 160. We are in the stall, so we're gonna wrap. Guys, this looks and smells beautiful. I don't know if you guys can see that. Ah, oh, just gorgeous. All right, so again, we're using beef consomme. It is just the top notch flavor you can get. And this bark has set, which is why we want to go a little extra. So, when we pour the consomme over it, it's not going to lose the spark. So basically we're, we're wanting to put moisture inside here. Now we are going to have um, some drippings, so don't, I'm not going to do the, 
Well, am I going to? Yeah, I am going to do the whole thing. So, all right. So, got that in there. Beautiful color, beautiful bark. Like that. Get some heavy duty um, aluminum foil, shiny side down, so we trap in all that heat radiation. That's what it's called, radiation science. All right, I am gonna leave one side open because I, I wanna I want to put the probe in there um, and then wrap it around the probe, so. All right, get it back on. All right guys, it's been just over four and a half hours. We hit about, um, 210 degrees. I've been checking it. It wasn't just quite tender, so I just let it go more. So let's see where we're at now. Again, it's not about the temperature, it's about the tenderness now. Alright. Yep, reading 209 there. 210 there and Oh, I don't know if you, if you can tell, but it's just going in and out without any problems. Oh, okay. Yep, we're good. Oh, smells fantastic. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to get this inside, um, wrapped, and we're just going to let it rest for, for an hour or so. So while the beef is resting, we're going to get our mise en place ready. For those of you that watch as many cooking shows as I do, you're welcome. All right, so first thing we're gonna need is some garlic. All right, so I know it looks like I have a lot of garlic here, but honestly, there's not too much just because it's so small. I mean, pro that's probably the only actual good size clove I have. So if you use that as comparison, I have two, three, four, either four, four or five cloves. Um, now, I, I love garlic, so you don't have to use as much as I'm using. But it, I just love the flavor it gives. Next, we're going to use some some uh, sliced pimentos. Um, so you can get diced pimentos. Uh, for whatever reason, the store didn't have them when I went by, so they just had these sliced. So if you can find the diced, use that. It's a lot easier. So if I was guessing in quantity, I'm using maybe a quarter cup. You don't want to use too many, just, just enough to get a little pop of color and add a little extra flavor. And you know what, I'm going to add just a little bit more. That's probably just shy of a quarter cup. Next is going to be your green chilies. Um, so I, I got these on sale. Um, it's basically diced green chilies that have been roasted and peeled. Uh, just get diced green, green chilies, whatever um, brand you can find. And I'm using two of these cans, and these are 7 ounce cans. So. Just shy of, of a pound. Next is an onion. Alright, that's really the only prep work we need before um, we're ready to pull everything together. So again, it was one whole white onion, two 7 ounce cans of diced green chilies, about a quarter cup of diced pimentos and four to five cloves of garlic. Again, um, use whatever quantities you want. There are no rules in this recipe. Um, it's whatever your flavor profile is. All right, guys, it's been about an hour, so this thing is resting. And you don't have to worry about um, having it resting, keeping temperature, because what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to reheat it when we're when we're um, making the corn, the green beef. Um, so just foil it, put it in the oven, let it rest for an hour. Alright, all right, so now we're just going to pull it. And look at that. Look at that bark. And the smoke ring right there. Alright, so I, I got to try. Got a piece. Oh, look how it's just tearing apart like that. I got to try a piece. Look at that. Let me see. Make sure you can see it. Oh, that's just gorgeous. That bark. All right. Yep, it's delicious, just like I knew it would be. All right, basically just tear it apart. And as you're doing this, 
um, kind of mix it inside inside this juice because we're gonna use this juice in the green jelly. It's just gonna increase the flavor even more. And if you get big pockets of fat like this, um, how just how's guys bouncy like that? Go ahead and pull that out. That's not a good chew. All right, got this all pulled. Just look at that. Look at the juiciness of that. All the flavors mixed together. You see, you see that juice that was in the bottom of it kind of just went back into the meat. All right, so now we're gonna pull together the green green chili beef. All right, so get a get a good pot, heat it up. Get maybe about a tablespoon of oil in there. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna saute our onions. Get those in there. And we just want these to get soft and reduce a little bit. Add some salt. All right, it's been a few minutes. I'm just getting these things just a little bit softened up. Get, get, some, get some juice out of them. Now we're going to be adding our garlic. I'm talking to my camera, buddy. All right, it's been about eight minutes. Everything's softened up. Got the juice is released. Now, kind of just add everything else in. Add our beef with all the juices. Want every last bit. Nothing goes to waste. Now we're also going to add in our pimentos and all of this green chilies. Okay. Now this is blending together. Now this is where a lot of you are probably going to start not liking me. So we're adding in all of our spices now. I'm doing it for look and taste. So um, I'll estimate how much I'm putting in, but honestly, just like this entire cook, it's more like a guideline. You put in whatever you, where you think. So first I'm gonna do some garlic powder. Not too much because we're, we have fresh garlic in there. Some onion powder. Again, this just strengthens, strengthens the savory notes. Maybe about a teaspoon of that. Some cumin. If you watch my fajita video, you know I love my cumin. And it's not coming out fast enough for me. Pop this thing off. There we go. So honestly, I'm probably adding in about a tablespoon. Now some smoked paprika. Maybe about half teaspoon. Some ground oregano. Again, probably about a half teaspoon. I am also adding in some ancho chili powder. Now, add whatever chili powder you want. The goal of this is not to be spicy. If people want spice on their tacos, whatever, they can add spice. This is just a, just a little, nice little kick. Not too spicy. And probably a no, half teaspoon of this as well. And a little more salt. I'm using kosher salt. Probably about half teaspoon to a teaspoon of that. And fresh ground black pepper. Half teaspoon of that. Mix all this up. Alright, 
Now this next part is really where you need to eye it. So I'm adding in some green chili enchilada sauce. You basically you want a you want a consist consistency of a of like a chili. So I just have two cans here, and I'll add as needed until I get the consistency. And you want this to cook down and reduce a little bit. So you, you want you want that thick, almost chili consistency. So I'll add until it looks right. So this honestly looks good. I probably added. About half of this can, and it's a 15 ounce can. And you want more green um, enchilada, more green enchilada sauce than you want um, juice from the meat. So if you need to add more, you can. And you know what? I think I'm gonna add a little bit more because we, we can also thicken it. Alright, so I've added almost all of that. Not quite all of it, but almost. Alright, that just looks delicious. And the smell coming off of this pot is amazing. I mean, look, just look at all the beef in there with the smoke ring. Ah. Alright, now we want to bump up the heat a little bit so we get this thing to a simmer and let it reduce. Alright, so it's been about 20 minutes and as you can see it hasn't reduced very much. If anything it's released more juices, so that's fine. Juice is flavor. So what I'm going to do is actually add some cornstarch to it, just kind of thicken it up. Alright, so this is the smarter thing to do with the cornstarch. Make a slurry out of it with just some water. Um, that way it doesn't clump up in, in there. Alright, we're at the consistency we want. Um, so I ended up doing two dumps of, of the uh, cornstarch slurry. Um, probably total, maybe about quarter cup, maybe a little more than quarter cup. Of the, of the slurry. So this is what you're wanting. Nice, thick. And that's it. Um, we're going to get rest of dinner ready. Got some friends showing up. We're going to get this dry. Just, I mean, just, just look at that. That's that's just gorgeous. And you know you know what's right when you can scoop it and there's barely anything dripping off. All that is just one big scoop of goodness. Alright, so this is what the final product is. Looks delicious. Right. Had some cheese on there. Not gonna put any sauce on there yet. I just want to taste how it naturally is. Alright. It's gonna be messy, but that's alright. The smokiness is coming through. The green chilies. They're basically a good, messy Southwest yummy. beef green chili. It's yummy. Okay, I'm glad you like it. So it's oozing out. All right, guys. So I'm going to get eating. Let him eat a little bit more. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you like what I'm doing, go ahead and subscribe down below. Hit that like button. And leave a comment how you like this. And let me know what you got grilling next. See ya.